Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Michael. I'm going to be your host for this afternoon session where we're looking at a brand new topic for our webinar series and it's emailing statements. So we'll probably spend around about 45 minutes looking at the basics of emailing out statements in today's session. So we're just going to cover the, the very basics. I'll show you the agenda in just a moment. Today we're joined by uh, Tina. Jackie and Abby, who will be on hand to answer your questions as we're working through the session today. A little bit of housekeeping though before we do get started. So just to let everyone know, you don't need a microphone for these sessions. Uh, if you've got one and you've enabled it, then you'll just find it's muted automatically. So you'll find a, a line through that and you can't unmute yourself during the session. Now that means you can't verbally ask us any questions, but you will be able to type them in the questions. And as I say, that's why Jackie, Tina and Abby are on hand. So questions can be submitted via the questions panel, which you should see in the bottom right hand corner of your screen. If you can't currently see that, just click the little icon on your toolbar, the one that looks like the speech bubble containing the question mark. Should expand the panel down the right. You've got the, the box then available. Any questions or comments, pop them in there. We'll try our best to answer as many as we can. Uh, so we'll either get a, an answer to your question, maybe a link to one of our help centre articles, which has got the steps in, or maybe probably the Maybe the best course of action that they can advise is to get in touch with our support team. But we'll try our best to pick as many as we can. It is a very busy session. Uh, so we got over 100 of you on the session this afternoon. Uh, so please bear with us. If you want a copy of today's slides, I know a lot of you like to download those. Some of you like to print them out as well. Uh, they are available as well. So again, just click your little icon on your toolbar. Two copies of that. One is the coloured edition and the other is with all the colours stripped out just in case you like to print it. So it should be called a print friendly version. The a recording of today's session, uh, common questions and answers uh, and also the handouts as well, they will be also made available to you afterwards. So you will receive a follow up email later on today and that will include a number of links. One is to see a city where you can get all of that specific to this webinar. You can register for other webinars using the link provided. And also if you've missed any sessions and you're playing a little bit of catch up, because we have run some sessions previously on statements. So looking just statements in general, uh, then do do have a look at that. You can, as I say, you can always play catch up via the recordings. You can watch those at any point. So link is included on your follow-up email. Right, uh, let's have a look at what we're covering. So a little bit of background, first of all, to emailing out statements from your software and just email in general as well. Uh, I've got a couple of polls that I want to run with you just to almost like gauge where everyone's at with that at the moment. We're then going to run through a series of demonstrations. So looking at emailing individual statement, emailing a batch of statements, so completing a, maybe a full statement run and how quick it could, potentially it can be. Uh, we're going to look at applying email settings uh, to a layout. So what can you easily change? Now there's two two levels of that. And when we get on to that one, I'll explain more about that because you can actually do it within Report Designer as well, which was we're not touching report designer today. We're going to look at the basic email, the email settings that you can easily amend. And we're also going to look as part of the, that email settings is the send immediately option, just to show you what that would look like. Just at the end, I'll explain more about the additional support and benefits that you've got available. But as I say, keep your questions coming. We'll try our best to, to pick that up. Right, okay, so I'm going to start with a little bit of background, first of all. So obviously, Sage 50 accounts, and it's something that you've been able to do for a long, long time now. Uh, makes it very easy to email out your documents. You may have initially a little bit of uh, a little bit of a setup process to go through, depending which email software you use, and obviously, potentially each layout has its own email settings as well. So there may be a little bit of a setup task to do initially, just to make sure it's working correctly. But other than that, it does mean, that may just be a one-off as well, it means that sending invoices, orders, remittances, and also completing your statement run can be a very quick and simple task. And I'll, I've got a bit of a poll to ask a little bit about that in just a moment. Now you can send your statements individually or in bulk, and we're gonna be covering both options today. I think this specific webinar was inspired by a few a few, a few queries we got uh, probably about a month ago in relation to how people were generating their statements and sending them out either by printing or emailing them. 
some strange techniques out there that people follow. Now, a number of layouts included in your software for statements will include default settings to work with Microsoft Outlook. And it's those layouts and integrating with Microsoft Outlook that I want to look at today. Now, you can configure your, your layouts to work with webmail, such as SMTP settings, but we're going to cover those settings in the advanced session. So that will be in two weeks time, the advanced session. We're going to look at from the, the rep report designer side in that session as well. But we're going to look today at a couple of the layouts and how they work with Microsoft Outlook and also how easy it is to configure your layouts using the email defaults option. So we're just really covering the very basics of emailing out statements in today's session. Right, now I'm going to run a couple of polls at this stage. So I'm going to quickly launch the first one. Uh, so if you don't mind, if you could choose an answer, submit that. So how do you currently generate your statements? Do you email them? Do you currently print them? Or maybe do you use a combination of both? You email some, you print some. So let, let me know, just choose an answer. I will share the results with you as well, but I'll, I'll wait till a decent percentage of you have voted on that one. I've got a couple of these polls just to quickly run through, just to gauge a little bit of an idea. Excellent, right, okay, we're just up about 84% or so of you having voted there. So let me share the results with you. So we've got a, almost half of you currently emailing, uh, about a quarter of you currently printing, and about 30% of you or so using a combination of the two. So hopefully today's session, you'll feel a little bit more confident if you are emailing. And if you're not currently emailing, or maybe you're just using a combination of that because you, you're not really that familiar with it yet, then hopefully more of you will move towards email. And it can be a big time saver. I've certainly seen it over the years where you know, people have said it takes ages to do a statement run. It doesn't have to. Now, I'm going to run a second poll as well. So let me hide that one. Second poll I want to quickly ask a little bit about is, do you currently use Microsoft Outlook? So just give me a yes or no. So again, we'll see what uptake we get on this one. Again, I'll just wait like a decent percentage of you having voted. So simple question, do you use Outlook? Okay, excellent. So let me close that one. And again, I'll share the results with you there. So about 83% of you currently using Outlook. Does make it that bit easier because some of your layouts are designed to work with Outlook. And we're gonna cover that in today's session. 17% 70, 17 of you saying no. Uh, again, you can configure layouts to work with webmail, such as Gmail, Hotmail, etc. Uh, but we're going to cover more about that in the advanced session. But we're just trying to really concentrate on the very basics today of sending them out. So we'll use Outlook as the example in today's session. Now I'm going to go back to the slides and I've got one final question for you. And it's this one. So if you do print your statements, how long does it take you to complete your statement run? So even for if for those of you that said you use a combination, so on the printing side, how long does it take you to complete your statement? So Abby, Jackie and Tina will probably have a, a meltdown in a moment when they say hopefully all of the answers coming through. So if you don't mind, pop an answer in the questions panel. So does it take you just an hour to complete that process? Two hours, a day, two days, longer? Just a rough estimate. So if you can, pop something in that, the questions panel and I'll, I'll see what we get. You might be thinking, I haven't got a clue. I've never really thought of it. So if not, have a bit think about that. 
going forward? How long does it honestly take you to generate them or complete the printing element of your statement run? Don't worry if you don't, if you don't print them, fine. Don't answer that one. But if you do, Now, I've, I've, I've certainly seen some uh, extremes over the years as well. So anything from looks like 15 minutes, someone's put there. So who was that? Uh, Pramod, your, your, your answer there. Your uh, 15 minutes. And who's got the longest there? Let's see if I can spot a big one. Uh, so Shona, you were straight in with three hours. Uh, we got one hour, two hours uh, a day. So it, it can vary as well. Obviously, it depends how many, how, if nothing else, how quick your printer is. And obviously, there's a cost involved in that as well. So actually paying for postage, whereas email, you would probably regard it as being, a, other than a little bit of your time, you would probably regard it as being a free service. Right, so we are going to cover the very basics of today's session. Uh, in today's session, I should say. So we're going to run through a series of demonstrations. I'm not, I haven't got hardly got any slides for today's session. I just really want to call, concentrate on the basics of emailing out statements. So we're going to run through a demo. So I'll be sharing my screen. Right. A good question, a good comment there from uh, Karen there. It takes me 40 minutes if the boss is helping. <laughs> Less if you could do it yourself. Yeah, it, obviously it depends as well also on how many people are involved in that process as well. I've heard of, you know, smaller family run businesses where they get family members in just to come to help out with that statement run and it takes anything up to two days. But with email, it can almost be, you know, a couple of minutes and you're done. Right. Anyway, we're going to run through these uh, demonstrations. So we're going to look at emailing an individual statement, give you an idea of what that looks like. Yes, some of you will need to bear with me on, on some of these options or some of these uh, demos, as you'll be more than familiar with that. We're going to look at emailing all statements. Now, sometimes that can be a bit of an eye opener for people. So a lot of people do think when you start emailing that you need to do them one at a time and you don't. So hopefully, if nothing else, if you were in that position, you go away saving yourself lots of time thinking you might have been thinking as well what well why does email take so long and that's probably the reason why you were just doing them one at a time so you can email your statements out in a batch it'll split them all up for you and off they go now we are going to look at applying email settings to a layout give you an idea of the kind of things that you can easily change using the email defaults option and also this send immediately option which is a fab option uh, that, well that, if you use outlook which the majority have said of you said you were then that's an option that you may not have been aware of so as soon as you output it you can flag your layout so that when the emails are output it just sends them automatically you don't need to do anything with it Anyway, let's come back to the, the demonstrations themselves. So I'll share my screen. Uh, as you can see on my screen, I've got my customers. So this is just a copy of the demonstration data. And I've tweaked it a little bit so that we haven't got loads and loads of outstanding balances. So you can see the top three in my case have an outstanding balance. So I'm just going to concentrate on a handful today just so you can get an idea of what that process looks like. So let's start with the first one. I'm just going to do start with uh, demos, demonstrating how to email a single statement. So I'm going to do it for one customer only. So I'm going to select that customer and I'm going to go up to statements. Now, you'll see on mine at the moment, because I've got a really low resolution set on my monitor just to make things a little bit clearer for you so you can see it. So it groups some of my icons together. You might have and you probably will have if you're working on a decent sized monitor, you probably have a, a statements icon shown separately at the top. But mine groups it just because of the resolution and the space. So I'm going to go into statements. And by default, if you then go into layouts, you'll have loads of statements available to you. So what I've done is I've just flagged a couple of them as favorites. So the ones I'm going to use so that I'm not myself scrolling up and down the list trying to find them. Again, if, if you've designed your own layout or there's a, a specific one you do use, click on the little star next to it. And it'll add it into your favorites. A little bit easier to find then. Right, we're going to start with this very first one, this A4 statement. It's a grouped and outstanding items designed for plain paper for printing 
or emailing. So because it mentions email, it's configured already to work with Outlook. So I'm just going to select that one and we're going to click the email option. Obviously, you've got it on the toolbar here, which follows you around as you move your mouse over the various layouts. I've got email at the top as well. Um, both do exactly the same thing. So it asks me for my, my date range. Now, I'm just going to accept the date range purely because I'm doing a grouped and outstanding items only statement. If you maybe doing an all item statement, you might sort of narrow it down to say, right, this is the statement from the maybe the last month. And if you are specifying things like a date range, you can use this little icon at the end of the transaction date range just to select your, your relevant periods a little bit quicker. So what I'll do is I'm just going to run this up to uh, the 31st of January. I'm not going to tick the checkbox for the purpose of this demonstration. That's something you may be familiar with if you've come along to our Age Debtors uh, webinar. So I'm just going to accept the date range that comes up essentially. OK, that one. And it tells me the report is successfully output to email. So I click OK to that one. Now, it does mention at this stage as well, and you'll only get this message if you're on the Sage 50 Accounts Standard or Sage 50 Accounts Professional. You don't get that message if you're on the Essentials level of the software. You don't have the Communications tab within your, your customer record. So we'll come back to that one a little bit later on. I'm just going to click No for the time being for that one. But as far as email is concerned, that's the email generated. Now, if I switch to Outlook at this stage, where am I up to? There we go. And in my drafts folder, I've got one. So what it's done when I've generated that email or generated the, the statement for that one customer, it's generated an individual email for me. And if I just quickly open that email, you'll see, be able to see what it looks like. So it's picked up the email address from the, the customer's account. It's picked up a subject line automatically as well. Now you can configure these as well. It's it's attached the statement as a PDF. And it's got some information on the main body of the the uh, the email as well. Now by default, by outputting that one to email, it gives me the opportunity because it's saved it in the Outlook drafts folder that I can then come in. I can view it, I can make any amends. It's probably something that we would encourage you to do initially if you are integrating with Outlook, just output them into your draft folder so that you can have a check of them. It's not a great time of saving doing it that way because you will need to come in, check them, and then if, if and when you're ready, you can click send. But by doing that, it means that you can, if you need to make amends, you can do that beforehand. And all I would do at that point, I would just click send and off it goes. So it would now be in my sent items at that point. So that's how easy it is to output a single statement. Right, my drafts folder is empty at that point again. Let's go back to Sage. Right, what we'll do this time then is I'm going to select these five. Now I could have just obviously clicked clear and go to generate statements and because I've got nothing selected it would try and generate a statement for all of them. I'm not going to do that just for speed I'm just going to select these five. Now two of them there you will see have a zero balance and I, I want to pick up on that a little bit later and well we'll pick up on that when we we output the emails as well. So we're going to go back to uh, statements again. I'll use the, exactly the same layout and I'll just put, I'll put that to email again. So again, what I'll do is I'll just pop that date back. Just to say I want to run them up to the end of January and I'll just OK that. So it tells me the report has been successfully output to email, so I'll just OK that. I'll ignore the communication history again. I'll come back to that right at the end of the session, I think. And what we've now got is we've got these four emails. Now, you might be thinking, well, there was only three that had a balance, but 
and then you selected five accounts. This one here, we'll have a look at in just a moment. But again, we're in the same position. It's generated an individual email for each customer with their statement attached. So if you are in the currently, maybe you've been running through generating statements and you've been running it for one customer, outputting it, doing it for the next customer, outputting it. You don't need to do that. You can, you can do them all at the same time. So outputting your statement run in bulk. So it's only going to have their statement attached. So for instance, if we go into this first one, let's have a quick look at their statement. So we can see it's for that A1 design services. It's got their statement attached. Just close out of that. Close out of the email. We'll go into the second one. Again, we'll just open that one. This time it's for ABS garages. Again, it's got their balance attached or their, their statement attached. A lot, I think a lot of people do get worried. And if you have designed your own layout, it's worth checking as well just before you do start sending automatically that it is splitting it properly. It will do if you're using one of the default layouts. So what it means is to complete your statement run, if, you, if you're not doing it in bulk so far, is that just make sure you've either got, when you come into Sage itself, either highlight the records that you want to send a statement to, or make sure that you've got nothing selected. And then obviously when you go through the statements, it will do either for what you've got selected or if you've got nothing selected, it will try and do it for all of them. Janice, you're mentioning about already, what, what if you uh, have used pre-printed pre statement paper? Uh, obviously we're looking at emailing today. I'm not sure if I've misunderstood the, the comment at that point, but we're looking at emailing your statements in today's session. So you wouldn't need any stationary. So obviously one of the benefits, there's no, no stationary costs, no printing costs at that point. So make your selection into statements, select your layout, I'll put it to email. It generates the statements for you. Now in that position where I had, I selected five and it generated uh, four. Now the fourth one, I think, actually I think it's this account. And the reason it includes this account in my statement run is that if I have a quick look at the activity, you can see what it's done there. I've got an invoice and a credit note, both for £120, but because they haven't been allocated, it means that the transactions are outstanding. So when you run a statement that picks up outstanding transactions, it includes those, in this case, it includes that account in there as well. So if you're finding it is generating zero, zero balance statements, or might list something, it'll just be that you just need to tidy up your accounts, which is easy, easily enough done. Right, looks like everyone's with me so far. Again, keep your questions coming. As I say, we've got Jackie, Abby and Tina on hand, typing away, answering as many questions as can. Looks quite busy on that. So do bear with us on the, if you're waiting for an answer to any questions that you've, you've typed in. Right, what we're gonna do next then, is we're going to this time use a different layout. So if I highlight that one customer, just as an example, again, go back to statements, and this time I'll choose this one. So the 11 inch two part statement with remittance advice. Again, it's a grouped statement and it's outstanding items only. Now, if I try and output this one to email, Again, I'll, I'll do it for the same same criteria as what we specified earlier. And this time, and this is my, it might be something that you get if you first try emailing as well. Uh, it might, you might get this message, no email settings were detected. Would you like to apply email settings at this point? Now, if I click yes, it takes me into this screen, the email defaults window. However, I can also get to this window from another area 
and that's just from the main desktop. So let's just close out of that for the time being. And I can access, as I say, I can get access to it just from the main screen. So I go into settings and then email defaults, I can get access to the exactly the same window in that way. Right. Now, obviously on the, the first tab, we've got the email client. So in my case, it's Microsoft Outlook. If you're using a webmail program, it would just be a case of selecting that from the the drop down at the top and then quite a few of the or some of the more common email providers are listed so if you were to select gmail as as for example it will put in your smtp settings if you don't know know your smtp settings have a look within our help center and it's got most of them available to you but that's all you would need to to complete what we're going to do though is we just want to concentrate on outlook for the time being so I'm going to leave it set to Outlook. All I can do, sorry, I've got tabs for each of the uh, document types that I can essentially email from the software. Now, you, some of you might not have all of these, for instance, sales orders and purchase orders. Those options are only available if you're in the professional level of the software, but you will have the relevant tabs for the documents that you can email. So the one we're looking at is statements. The tabs are pretty much the same. If I just flick through them, you'll see that Really, it's, it's the same settings. It does change a little bit based on the attachment file name, for instance. But other than that, the fields are, are the same. So if you can apply settings to, to one of your, your templates, you'd be able to do the others as well. So if I go back to statements, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just quickly run through and show you how you can change maybe some of the settings. So first one is the two box. So this is going to ask you which of the fields within the customer's record contains the email address that you want to use when sending statements. It should default to email number one. Now, if you run version 28 or lower, you will have three options. If you install version 29, which was out as of Monday of this week, if you haven't, if you're not aware of 29 yet, do get yourself signed up for one of our version 29 What's New webinars. They're available on the list to register for. You'll see all the great features that we put in there. So one of the benefits is that you've now got up to six email addresses. So I'm just going to leave that set to email address number one. Obviously, you could pop in a CC address if you want to, pop in a subject line. Uh, so subjects, it will obviously suggest some state uh, some options for you so i'll just put statement from got my company name in there obviously it would pick up yours just okay that we then got attachment settings now very unusual this one to take this box but you can send the information from the statement in the main body of the email if you wish most people will attach it as a document so by default, the attachment will be in PDF format, but you can change that if required. PDF is probably what, probably, probably just really the the standard for for attached documents. So I would recommend you leave it as PDF. The attachment file name, so the name of that statement when it's attached to the email. What do you want to call it? So again, there's some preset descriptions for you for the file name. So statement from, it might say, you might want it to say February statement from whatever your company name is, or February include the year statement from whatever your company name is. So I'll just leave it set to that, that first one. You can password protect it. You may or may not have come across this option within your customer record, but within the customer record defaults area, there is an option for a reporting password. And if you pop something in there and flag your, in this case, your layout to use that password, then when whoever receives that will need to be prompted to type in the password to be able to view that document. Not sure if that's widely used or not that one, because obviously you are sending it to a specific email address. But it is there, should you want it. 
you've got the option to override the default out, out <laughs> sorry override the default outlook signature so if you've got any setup it would let you choose it and then the final option, and we're going to come back to this one a little bit later on, are the sending options. You've got two for this one, save to mailbox, which is what we were looking at initially, where we're outputting the email and it was saving it as a draft. Or we can send immediately. So it means when we're outputting, rather than it save it as a draft, it will just send it straight out. Again, making that process that much quicker. We'll come back to that send immediately in a few minutes. So those are the settings I'm going to specify. What I do at this point, I click apply. And then what I need to do is browse through and select the layout or layouts if you're using more than one that you want to apply those changes to. So it's that one there that I'm going to use. I'll just OK that. Obviously, you get a progress bar at that point. Let's just minimize outlook. You get a progress bar at that point. The more layouts that you select, the longer it's going to take. So once we've done that, we just click OK and that's it done. So it should have applied those settings for me. So I don't need to go into the report designer at this stage just to make those basic changes. Right, what I'm going to do at this stage, I'm going to output some more statements. Now, a quick question from Eileen there, and it's it's to do with selecting records. And I'll, I'll quickly pick up on that one because a few others might be in the same position there, Eileen. I think Tina's picked it up as well. Uh, so Eileen's just mentioning there, she's unable to highlight individual customers from the list. So what, what, I, what you see sort of on my list is that when I, click a record it highlights it if i click another record it highlights it if i click a record that is highlighted it removes the highlight and that's to do with the list what you term the list selection style so it's like an on off highlight type option if i put pop into tools and then options and on the environment yet yeah, is the environment tab so tools options into the environment tab, we get this little option here, list selection style. Now, by default, yours will be set to the window selection style. You can toggle between these at any time. So, with, Eileen, you've probably got yours set to the window selection style. So, I'll show you what that means when you've got it set that way. So, just OK that. If I go back to customers, if I highlight a customer and then go and select another one, you can see that as I click, the highlight follows me around. And if I want to select multiple records, all I need to do is just hold down the control key. And with the control key held down, I can select multiple records. You can also do it where if I highlight that first or, or a one in the list, and then maybe I want to select a range of customers. If I hold down my shift key and click on that one, it will highlight them all in between as well. But if I release the key and then click anywhere, again, it starts following me around. So I'm just going to set mine back to the Sage selection style. So we'll back into tools, options, and then again on the environment tab, and I went for this Sage selection style. And you'll find it applies that throughout the software as well. So if you're working in invoicing or a common one as well, if you're working in the bank reconciliation screen, that's how you can select more than one transaction simultaneously. So have a go of that. You can toggle between the two styles if needed. Anyway, back to the, the task in hand, which was statements. So what I'm going to do, I'll just pick on these, these two at this stage. We'll go back into statements. Select my statement that I've just amended. And what I'll do is I'll output that to email. Again, we'll select the set the date back. Just OK that. It tells me the report has been successfully output to email. Just OK that one. I'll click no to the communication history again just at this stage. We'll go back to Outlook. Let's just get rid of these ones. These ones were from earlier. I forgot to get rid of those. So what it's done this time 
it's output the two. So previously it was saying no email settings have been set. So that's how easy it can be to change your settings and apply settings to one or more of your layouts. Let's just pop into it. We can see obviously it's pulled through the relevant email address from the relevant customer's account. In this case, it was email one from within the customer's record. It's got the subject line that I chose. It's got this statement in PDF form. And again, it's got some basic information within that list as well. So at this stage, again, I'm sort of almost like where I was at the beginning of the session, where it's outputting and saving it as a draft. Now, that means if I've, you know, I've done a full statement run, maybe I've output 50 statements, it means I've got 50 emails to look through and make any changes if I do need to. And then I would click send onto next one. If I needed to, I've got the opportunity to make any statements or just check what's there and click send. So it adds that sort of extra time onto the, the length of your statement run. Right, let's go back to Sage and see how we can make that a little bit quicker. So what we're going to do this time, again, I'm going to go back to the, those email defaults and I'm going to set it to send emails or, uh, automatically or immediately, as the option is called. So we'll just close out of there for the time being. We're going to go back into settings, down to email defaults. Again, I've, I've configured it still, set to Microsoft Outlook, choose statement. And it's this option at the bottom that I'm going to change this time around. So what I want to do is when I output to email, using my specific layout, I want it to just go automatically. So I'll send immediately, I'll click apply, I'll go into expand statements, select the layout that I want to apply that change to. Again, you can do more than one if you want to. If you've accidentally selected all of them when you click OK, it just means it's going to take longer to go through that progress bar because it's got to, obviously, it's got to run through and apply the same change to each of them. What I would encourage you to do, find yours on the list. So tick the one or, or the, the layouts that you want to apply the changes to. OK, that. Get the little progress bar. We're back to the email defaults. It's done. We click OK and that's it sorted. Right, now what I'll quickly do just before I run through a demonstration of that one, we'll, in drafts, you can see it's completely empty. In sent items, I'll just select those as well and get rid of those. Just so you can see what that looks like. So back to Sage, we've got those two selected. I'm going to go back into statements, select my layout, and then I'm going to output to email. Choose the date range, just as I've done for the other examples. OK, that one it tells me it's successfully output to email. OK, that one. I'll just click no to this prompt for the time being. And you'll see if I go into drafts, there's nothing there. And in sent items, the two emails are there. That's just been generated on the back of what I've just done. So that means I've just output it to email and off it goes. So that's where the big time saving comes in. If you are working with webmail, it will do that automatically. You don't have the choice of saving it as a draft. So if you're working with likes of Google Mail or Hotmail, Live Mail, anything like that, it will just send it automatically. So you don't get that choice of saving it to mailbox or send immediately. It just sends it immediately automatically. So that's how you can save time. So if you have got some sort of weird and wonderful uh, way of generating your statements, hopefully, if you're going to go down the email route, if you want fully that way, uh, then you can see how much time it's potentially going to save you. Now, one final thing I just wanted to quickly mention, and it was coming back to when I output the uh, statements about the communication history. So let me just output them again just so you can see that message. Just OK that. It's output to email again, so off they go again. 
we'll kill that. And it prompts me, do you want to update the communication history? So remember, you don't get this prompt if you're on the essentials level. If I click yes, you don't see anything else. But what it's actually doing at that point is if I go into one of those customers that I've just sent a statement to, so we'll pick on the first one, into communications. So down the left hand side, you've got the communications. And there's the, the details. It doesn't have a copy of it, but it does have the details of the communication that was sent. So you almost got like a CRM system there. You can see the, the any communications coming in, going out, etc. We can double click on it as well and see what essentially see see what was done. So it's just keeping that track of that a statement has been sent. But quite commonly as well, people will ask about, well, how can I save a copy of that statement? Probably the easiest thing to do is when you are outputting a statement and you're emailing it. Remember what I said earlier about the going into settings and the email defaults? We mentioned about the CC address. So you could actually copy yourself in. Yeah, you've got a copy of it in your sent items. But you might want to copy it into maybe a, a team mailbox, for instance. So you do have that as an option as well. Uh, Kathy, you were just asking there, how can you get that message about the uh, updating the communications history? Uh, so again, it, it should come up automatically for you, that one. So when you're outputting, as long as if you're on the essentials level of the software, you won't get that message because you don't get that communications option. But if you're outputting via email, then that should pop up for you when you generate your statement. So for some of you, that will be maybe a bit of reassurance and I'll be I'll be already preaching to the converted. So you're already emailing them out. Uh, others where you may be doing a combination of printing only, hopefully it's giving you a little bit more confidence, maybe some food for thought as well going forward. Right, let's just pop back to the slides. So just bring us to the end of the demos. Remember, we do have an advanced demo planned in as well, and we will be covering similar topics for emailing out your invoices as well. But if you can apply email settings and you understand how to do it for statements, you will be able to apply that same knowledge that you've gained uh, to emailing out invoices as well. So remember, easy to email out statements as you've seen today. You can send them individually or the big time saver, send them in bulk. There are a number of layouts that contain default settings to work with Microsoft Outlook, but as you've also seen, it's easy to amend those settings using the email defaults. So just going into settings, email defaults. And if you do need it, so if you're using webmail, there's some useful information about how to configure your layouts within our help center. So if you've downloaded the handout, that link should work for you as well. Easy enough to find, but you obviously that link will take you direct to the help, relevant help information. And we'll be covering webmail and SMTP settings in, in a bit more detail in the advanced sessions. Right, now it brings us to the end of the demos. But just wanted to quickly tell you a little bit about Sage membership just before everyone leaves. And I'll also uh, bring, I'll, I'll show you the dates for those advanced sessions as well, just in case anyone is interested in heading along to those as well. So a little bit of information about Sage membership first of all. So obviously as a Sage user, you're going to have access to Sage membership benefits. It's not just about your software. There are other business benefits included in that as well. Now, if you've downloaded the handouts, you'll have all this information readily available. The links on these, these uh, slides will work for you as well. So it's, as I said, not just about your, your software, you've got access to things like member masterclasses, which are, I think it's a, it's a, the uh, image on the on the right there on the slide, gives you an idea of, of sort of what masterclasses are about. It's not about your software. These are webinars presented by business experts, whether it's to do with productivity, looking after your employees and developing them, et cetera. So more fun on business-based topics. So check those out. Learning available via Sage University. 
so all of our free e-learning courses etc are available via Seed City. You will have access to those community forums. You've got access to obviously to our support team. Uh, gives you access to certification and of course general business advice as well. So if you have downloaded the handouts, as I say, those links will work. So do check out the information that's available for you. For upcoming emails, what's new in version 29? So for some of you, it might be the first you've heard of version 29. When I mention that today, I've been using version 29 for the demonstration today. So sort of changes here and there. So we mentioned you've now got six email addresses in a customer and a supplier record rather than just the three. Quite a common request that one. So if you want to find out more about the changes, do get yourself signed up for a what's new in version 29 webinar. We're running those on a weekly basis. I think we've got another one on Friday of this week. Uh, but loads of other sessions as well. And for emailing documents, you've attended the session on emailing statements today. Jackie's going to be running a similar session for emailing invoices next Wednesday. The week after, it's back to me with uh, the advanced webinar for emailing statements. So we're going to approach it then looking at the email settings from within the report designer. There's a few extra things that you can change in there, including things like changing the, the, the text that appears in the main body of the invoice. And similar, Jackie will be doing it the week after on advanced settings for emailing your invoices. So if you are interested, watch out for your follow-up email. You'll get that round about an hour's time and it will include the links that you, you need for those sessions. Now, just before everyone starts disappearing, I want to quickly thank you for coming along. Appreciate it. Hope you've enjoyed it and it's given you some food for thought and you've feeling, you know, you've got that feeling you're a bit more confident in using your software. If you've got any thoughts, ideas that you'd like to share, anything at all in relation to the webinar that we've run today, or maybe you've got an idea for topics you'd like to see covered going forward, then if you can take a minute to share that with us on the little survey that should pop up as you leave today, that would be greatly appreciated. It should take you probably about a minute maximum to complete that survey. So if you can do that, as I say, we love reading your comments and your ideas and maybe some ideas for topics you'd like to see covered. We love reading those as well. Your follow-up email will be with you in round about an hour's time. So if you want a bit of a recap on what we've covered or if you didn't get a chance to download the handouts or uh, maybe you want to view some of the common questions and answers that we've provided today, that will all be available for you. So watch out for that one. Right, I can see uh, Abby, Jackie and Tina have been really busy with the, the questions. You've kept them very busy in the session today. So Sharon, you just mentioned there, uh, let me just pick up on Sharon's question. Sharon's got a question. So Sharon's just asking, can I add the same email address in the CC in bulk or do I have to do it individually? So what you're doing there, Sharon, is you're adding the email address. In fact, let me let me see if I can demonstrate that one to you. Just see if it's possible to to even manually enter one as well. Uh, so if I just go back into settings and then down to email defaults, uh, again we'll just pick on a statement and we'll pick on the CC address. So what we've got by default is we've got the in this case because I'm on version 29, I've got the the six email addresses. So I could say, right, I want to copy that in and I want it to not only go to the first email address on the customer's account, but I, I want to copy it into the second email address as well. So I can do that. If I wanted to specifically type an email address in, we can choose this option. So a final option. So if you want to CC it into your company's email address, then that's how you would do that. And you, you're setting that against a specific layout. So if I wanted to pop my email address in there, just as an example, pop my work one in. My mailbox is probably going to go mad at this point. So I've copied it in there and when I click apply and I well, make sure I choose a statement layout, so that would help. And I'll choose that one, the one that we've been using so far, just okay that. 
Oh, helps if I tick the box. Let me try that one again. So back into statements, tick it. Just okay that. Let it update. And we'll just okay that. And what I'll do is I'll quickly output two statements again. I'll use that layout that we just selected. And we'll email it. I'll just use today's date this time. It tells me it's successfully been output to email. Ignore the communication history and that should be it done. Now, if I go back to my mailbox this time, what I'm going to have is I'm going to have the two emails that I've just literally output. So they're in the sent items because they're sent automatically. But in my inbox, I'm also going to have the two that have just been copied into myself. So you probably wouldn't send it to yourself, your own mailbox, but you might have a company mailbox where you want a copy to be sent to. So you're doing it against the layout, that CC address, not the specific customer account. I hope that may, I hope that makes it clear. There is a, a BCC option as well, so a blind copy. So obviously the, the receiver wouldn't then see that, but you can only set that, and it's something that we will cover in the advanced session. It's not something that you can amend via the uh, by going into the email defaults option. So when I go into there and have a look at the statement, if I was within the report design and I was amending these settings, I'd get a few extra options. So one of them would be the BCC address. I hope that makes sense there. Right, okay. So I'm gonna pop back to the slides. Uh, we're gonna end the webinar at that point. If you do think of any more questions, do check out the information that is available in the Help Centre. Obviously our support team is on hand to answer basic questions and offer you help as well if needed. Otherwise, many thanks for coming along. I hope you have enjoyed it. Remember to complete the survey, should pop up as you leave, and also watch out for your follow-up email, which you receive in round about an hour. So thanks for your time and hopefully we'll see you on some more webinars. Many thanks.